Hey everyone, welcome to Exercise Check. In this video, we're gonna be going over unit testing, which can be found in 6.3 of the reading. Starting off, we're here at 6.3 for unit testing, and our first sentence is, work on these exercises within IntelliJ, the Java Web Dev Exercises project. As always, we have to open up IntelliJ into that project. If there's any refresher you need to have about how to do this, just revisit some of the past exercise videos. We will be updating the car test.java file by adding more test cases. The previous chapter in 6.2, we've already done a couple test cases here, so make sure that you go back there and review them and you have them inside of your class beforehand because we won't be covering that in this video. One thing before we do begin that I do want to bring up is that we need to make sure we have our jar files properly added to our library. So let's go ahead and make sure. If we come over to IntelliJ, we come up to this lib folder here. We see that we have two .jar files here. Jar files help our Java application run properly by using external code someone else has written to do something. In this case, we're going to be using these jars to test out our code. So we need to make sure that we import them into our Java application. To do this, we right click and say add as library. We press OK. And the same with the J unit. Now these two very necessary jar files are added into our library so we can use these within our application. So let's begin this exercise. Real quickly reviewing the code of 6.2, we've already set up some of the tests inside of our car test file. We've done the first two to-dos and we have three more we have to complete. We've also had to import a few things beforehand. Let's go to our first step, 6.3.1 the test gas tank after driving test. We're gonna be adding this test for the third to do. Gas level is accurate for driving within the tank range. And it gives us two other things here. Your test must include the car method drive, as well as this value within 50 miles passed into the drive. We expect the test car to have a gas tank level of nine. Okay, so first things first, let's set up this test before we even go any further. We're gonna go back to IntelliJ and we're gonna create a test. To create a test, we need to have the test annotation, which is the at sign test. Then we always have to have this public void. And then we have to get the method. They provided us the method in the example. Test gas tank after driving. Perfect. So now we've created our test. Now let's go back to those more specific tasks and see what we have to do within this test. Your test must use the car method drive testcar.drive, and we pass that 50 miles into the drive method, we have to expect our test car to have a gas tank level of nine. So it sounds like, first things first, we need to get this testcar.drive into our test. So we have our test car and we drive 50 miles. Now, test car, where is that even coming from? Well, if we look up here on line 11, it's actually within our test class. It's a class variable within our test, test car. But this right now is set to null. It's not instantiated anywhere. So where is it actually being created? Well, that's in the before tag. Before this test is ran, the annotation before is executed. Therefore, before this new test that we're writing is actually executed, this line will execute. So perfect, my test cart dot drive and drive 50 miles. So we have this code in here and everything looks like it's okay. No errors are showing. So what's next? Well, we have to add this assert equals into there. So I'm gonna copy that code here. So I place this assert equals, which is being imported above, expect nine, and then we have to provide our actual data. Our actual data is grabbing the gas tank level from the instance of our car class, which is test car, and seeing if they're equal. We also have this delta over here, this 0 0.001, what exactly is that? Well, that delta is just seen, is it plus or minus 0 0.001 from what we expect? It's there to provide us a little bit of wiggle room in our values of our expected and our actual data. So there we go, this test has been completed. I'm gonna run it individually first. Perfect, looks like one test has passed. Now I'm gonna run them all together just to make sure I haven't broken anything while doing this test. Perfect, three tests are now passing. Exactly what we wanna see, so let's move on. Now we're on to 6.3.2, test gas tank after exceeding tank range. Add a test for the fourth to do. The gas tank level is accurate after attempting to drive past the tank range. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this test. 
I'm going to copy the test name right before we switch over to IntelliJ. And I'm going to create it below this to do. We provide that test name. And our test has been created. So let's go ahead and see what we have to do for this test. Looks like we're on our own for this one. We'll need to simulate the car traveling further than the gas tank level allows. Let's copy this and bring it into our test so we can refer back to it, because it seems like important information. We'll need to simulate the car traveling further than the gas tank allows. So I need to know what is further than the gas tank allows. I don't know that. So let's try to dissect the car a little bit and see how far our methods will allow the car to go before this test should break. Okay, so I'm in the car class here and I'm looking at the constructor. We need to take in a make and model. Make and models don't really tell me anything about how far a car can truly go. Then I see gas tank size, which I'm assuming because we're in America, this is going to be in gallons, and then the miles per gallon. Well, these are two big pieces of information that we need to know. The tank size, how many gallons can I put in my car, and the miles per gallon. If I multiply the miles per gallon by the tank size, how many gallons are in the tank, I should know how many miles my car can go. So let's go back to our test and write that down. So the total miles I can travel is the miles per gallon times the tank size. So the total miles I can travel is miles per gallon times tank size. So what are we setting our miles per gallon to and our tank size in the constructor when we're building this test car that we're gonna be using? To figure that out, we have to go up to the before statement and see what we're putting into this constructor. We see that our tank size is 10 gallons and our miles per gallon is 50. 10 times 50 is 500. Therefore, after this car has completely ran out of gas, its odometer should show 500 miles because that's the furthest we can go on how much gas has been put in to our Toyota Prius. So from what we saw above, we know that the total miles that we can travel is 500. This is our tank range. This test needs to see what happens if we exceed our tank range. Ideally, what should be happening is that our odometer should stop allowing us to add miles to it when we run out of gas or exceed our tank range. So the expected odometer at the end of all this is 500. So the expected odometer rating is 500 when the tank is empty. So what we're going to do is make this test car drive 600 miles, not 500. We're going to try to break it, as in 500 was our limitations, and we want to push it to the limit. We want to push it out of its comfort zone to see what it does. So now we need to make sure that our odometer stays at 500, because again, that's the limitations of how much gas and the miles per gallon we have for our Toyota Prius. So what we do now is that we need to make sure, or assert equals, our odometer reading is expected to what we want. So I copy this line from above. I know my odometer reading should be 500 when this tank is empty, even though we drove 600 miles. In my test car, we need to get the odometer. So let's go ahead and run this. And we see it still works. Perfect. So let's go back now to our directions and see what we need to do next. We're on to 6.3.3, test gas overfill exception. The test for our last to do is a little different, but we still know it's a test. So before we even keep reading all of this stuff that looks like there's a lot of text to do, we're just gonna copy that test, come over to here and create a new test for this to do. All right, now that we have our test written, let's go back and start reading everything. All right, we're gonna perform an action on our car object and we're expecting to throw an error, okay? In this case, we are going to attempt to add gas to our car that exceeds the gas tank size. Well, that's not good. We're gonna get a pretty much overflow, aren't we? So first we need to add some text to our test annotation to tell the J unit to expect an exception. Okay, well that gives us this. So let's go back to our test and edit this a little bit. Take out test and paste this in there. So now we're telling our test we're expecting an exception to come back. So don't worry about it if you see it. Now we need to update the car class to include an add gas method. Easy enough, we're gonna copy this code here, add gas. We're gonna bring it over to the car class. I'm gonna put it at the very bottom. So it looks like what this method is going to do is take whatever is passed in as a parameter as gas, then use this getter to get the gas tank level, add them together, and then set the gas tank level again, our class variable gas tank level. Cool. 
everything looks good here. Let's go back. So it looks like back in car test, we need to implement new add gas method as a fail scenario. So let's take this code, copy it, and bring it over to our test. We need to import fail into our test. To do that, we come up here and we import it. Scroll back down, and we see that everything is A-OK. -okay. Let's move on. So it says we need to run the test, and it should fail. And the output is an unexpected exception. This test was expecting an illegal argument exception, but instead it got an assert error exception. Let's see if our test does that. Unexpected exception. Exactly what the direction said we were going to get. So why do we exactly get this? What's going on? What's the assertion error and what's the illegal argument exception? Well, we got back the assertion error. When you get back an assertion error, that means what we expected in the test is not being provided. What we expected in the test to come back is that illegal argument exception. Therefore, the test didn't see what it expected and had to break. That's why we got that assertion error. But what we want to get is that illegal argument exception instead. I know it's kind of weird to think about we need to get errors back in order for it to be okay, but it's good to note that it's completely fine to test for errors. So what we need to do is change our add gas method to return back this illegal argument exception so we stop getting that assertion error. So let's go back and we need to refactor car to throw an exception when we get too much gases added to the tank. So we need to find the set gas tank level method and modify it. So I'm going to copy the entire thing come back here, go to our car, and it said we need to find set gas tank level. So this is it right here. We paste in the given code, and that step has been completed. Now we should run the test, and then it should pass. Well, I won't believe it until I see it, so we're going to come back down here. We're going to run this again. And perfect, now it passes. It passes because now this add gas is actually throwing the illegal argument exception, which is what the test expected to see. Therefore, now this is a pass. To make sure that nothing else is broken, let's go back up here and run everything one more time. And everything passes. Awesome. What we want to see, that means this exercise is done. So great job sticking it out to the end. Thanks for doing this exercise with me.